In this tutorial, I'm going to show you how we can use the GraphQL Apollo cache. The first thing that you have to do is implement the libraries in your Gradle file. And in our case, we already have the Apollo runtime. And when we would like to create our cache, we just implement the Apollo normalized cache and the Apollo normalized cache SQL. In this tutorial, we're going to be working with the SQL version. So there is a couple of types of cache but I'm going to show you how we can use some of the parts of the cache SQL. When we have implemented them, let's go back to our network module and inside of it, we can just initialize the SQL normalized cache. And then to do that, we just do SQL normalized cache factory. We pass a context and we also give a name to our database. Then there is two more parts. One of them is to say what type of cache or how do we want our requests to work. In our case, we would like to use the network first, which means every time we would like to retrieve something, we would like first the network request to be sent. And if there is an error or just maybe there is no network connection at all, we're going to get all the results from the cache. So first, every time we're trying to get them from the request, but if that fails, we're getting them from the cache. So we ensure that there is two cases that we get actual results. After that, we're just saying dot normalized cache and inside of it, we're passing the normalized cache factory. And that's it. And now you have cache set up. And let's check out actually what's happening with our application. When we launch our application in debug mode and we go to the app inspection and we can select the application that it's launched, we can see that we have our database created, which is launches.db. Inside of it, let's see what is being returned. As we can see, for every result and every type, actually, from this result, we have a new record created. Also, the argument that we've put here in our launches is also set. So this means that every time that we have new results or new types, we are going to be having new keys with new values for the record. And when I click the button, to load more and I refresh the database, we can see that more data is being loaded. And this time we have the cursor here that we're passing, which means we're loading, you know, the next values. And again, we have our results here. We can also see that we have a result which will be launches and just our cursor. And the same will go if we go to the next page which will be just launches and the name of the cursor or the value with the new value of the cursor. And when we see the value over here, it will be everything that's being returned in one place. If we inspect this record value, we can see that it has reference to all the records for that cursor. Now we can see that it's not ideal the way that Apollo is returning our results and actually it's not idea how it's saving them. So we would like to change this thing. To do that, let's go in our project and go to where your schema is. Next to it, we're going to be creating a new GraphQL file with extension .graphqls at the end. Don't forget that, it's very important. And when we make it, let's just call it extra. Inside of it, we're going to be creating a type policy. And this type policy will be of type launch. And we are going to be set the key field to ID. To be easier to explain, I'm just going to show it to you first. So let's build the project. When we open the database again, and we see what's being returned, we can see that we have very different keys over here. Now, the current keys that we're seeing are missing the previously cursor value in front of them. And then we have this bigger value because before it was like 0 to 20 or something like that and currently we're using our actual IDs as a unique identifier and that's the exact reason why we're having this you know we're missing the launch and we have this ID here because we want this key to be unique to itself and every time that we have the unique ID it will be unique and also we have this cursor by itself like last time and when we click the load more button, of course, and we go and check the other one, we can see it's here. So the idea mainly behind this part 
of actually setting type policies is just to make unique identifiers and prevent Apollo of creating multiple records or saving multiple values in those records that are unnecessary. So to do that, we're just setting up, well, this is our unique, you know, ID that we want to just uh, make our key with. And every time that this is created, then the reference to it will be over here in the Apollo cache reference. And that's all good. But let's check something else. Every time we're getting these results, we're getting also the whole object with its cursor. And usually when we're paginating, we do not want to have like those different pages separated because our parameter is unique. What we would like is just to have one record containing everything that's being returned. And when we return new records, we would like this record to be updated. We do not want it to create new records with different keys. First, we would like to implement our libraries. And yes, we had the cache and cache SQL already implemented into our Gradle, but we would like to change them to incubating. And because these libraries are experimental still, we're going to be having this in mind. And I'm not sure if you're going to be using it in production, but if you are, just keep in mind that it's still experimental and, you know, anything can change. Next, let's go to the extra GraphQL S file. And inside of it, we're going to be setting another field here, which is we're setting the extent type query. And this is query here because we see that our type is query. And in the query type, we have the launches. And then we say field policy for field launches again that's the name of the field that we would like to work with and then we set which pagination argument we would like you can think of it like we would like to remove it from the key so this will be the after one and yes we can see that it gives us an error but we don't mind that because again this is just experimental I'm not even sure if the latest plugin for graphql is having this um, as a directive so you don't have to mind that you have an error here. Next, when we do that, let's go to our network module. Because we are using the incubating version, we're going to be having four new parameters. If you're not using the incubating, you will not have access to them. The first one will be for cache key generator, which we're going to be setting the type policy cache key generator. This is some, nothing that we're going to be touching on. And also the same for the Apollo resolver. This is just, again, something, something that's coming with Apollo. Uh, what we're going to be changing is the metadata generator and the record merger. We're going to be creating a custom metadata generator, which is just going to extend the metadata generator. And every time the field name is launches, it's just going to return us map with merge to true. And then we have the launches field merger, which extends the field merger. And inside of it, we're just making a check if our existing or incoming fields have uh, the merge data if it's not true, we're just returning the incoming one. This means that we don't have anything to merge. And if it's true, we're just merging the two lists, the existing one and the incoming one. By doing that, let's just launch the application right now. By the way, if you would like to clear your results, because we are using a cache, uh, we can click over here, open new query tab, and inside of it, we can just type delete from records, and then we click run. So when we do that and when we refresh, we can see that it's the records are being deleted. So this is just an easier way of uh, you clearing your data. So let's run again, actually, because we would like to have the initial data as well. Now let's find our object that contains every launch. As we can see, currently our object, which was containing previously launches with the after keyword as well, Currently, it's just launches and it contains everything from what, whatever was returned, the reference to it. Now, when we click the load button again to load more records and we refresh, we can actually see inside of it, we have more of this. So we have the next cursor added as well. And when we click more and when we refresh, we'll have even more. And if we view this data, from the launches, we can see that it contains every launch over here and it's just the reference, launch ID, and nothing else. 
and you can see how much more clean it is currently we have this one key record that's containing every reference that we need it's not like multiple records that is containing the references it's just one single record so that was it for this tutorial i hope you liked it and if you did please leave a like and subscribe for more